Welcome to another Practice Makes You Better series. In this particular episode, I'm gonna be tackling the category of other types of vehicle using my app of choice, which is Driving Test Success. This is the app that I use in the classroom with my students to get the best results. I normally do a 30 question mock test, but in this particular category, as you can see, it only has 22 questions. So it's one of the smaller categories. So I will be doing a 22 question mock test, breaking it down, giving you hints, tips, tricks along the way, showing you how to look for the golden nuggets, other words, clues, and giving you visual clues along the way. So if you struggle with other types of vehicles, then this video is for you. So let's jump onto my iPad and let's get started. So the first question, you're leaving a safe gap as you follow a large vehicle. What should you do if a car moves into this gap? If you're following a large vehicle, i.e. lorry or buses, you should be leaving enough space so you can see the road clearly. So if someone fills that gap, you just want to do the same thing, just drop further back. That's the safest option. So we're looking for something along those lines. Sound your horn, no. Start to overtake, no. Flash your headlights, no. Drop further back. And that's going to make the situation safer. Why is it more difficult to overtake a large vehicle than a car? The reason why it's more difficult to overtake a large vehicle is because it's longer. Normally like an articulated lorry with the trailer behind. So that's the reason why. So a large vehicle will have air brakes. No, it will take longer to overtake a large vehicle. Yeah, because it's longer. A large vehicle will be fitted with a speed limiter. No, it will take longer for a large vehicle to accelerate. No. Why should drivers be more careful on roads where trams also operate? The reason for this is because trams can't steer. Trams run on tracks, so trams can't steer. So any cyclists, pedestrians or motorists needs to be careful in this particular area. So we're looking for something along the lines of trams can't steer. Because trams can't stop for cars. No, because trams can't steer to avoid obstructions. Yes. Because trams don't have lights, no. Because trams don't have horns, no. You are waiting to turn right out of a minor road. It's clear to the left, but a lorry's coming from the right. Why should you wait, even if you have enough time to turn? The reason for that, if the lorry's coming from the right, something could be blocking, the, not something, the lorry could be blocking your view of something else coming. Normally cyclists, or motorcyclists, that's the reason why. The lorry could suddenly speed up, no. The lorry might be slowing down, it should be slowing down because it's turning left. The load on the lorry might be unstable, no. Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view, yes. You're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle? This is what I mentioned earlier on. So you've got a clear view of the road. That's the main reason. And there is a saying, if you can't see my wing mirrors, I can't see you. So on your driving lessons or driving test, if you drive behind something large, like a lorry or a bus, hold back so you can see their wing mirrors. It gives you a better view of the road. To leave a gap in case a vehicle stops and rolls back, no. To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake, no. To get the best view of the road ahead, yes. To offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake, no. Which vehicles are least likely to be affected by side winds? Right, you've got to be very careful with this question. This one says least likely, so it's going to be a car. They can flip it and it's going to be most likely and it's going to be a high sided vehicle. But because this one's least, we're looking for a car as the answer. So cyclists, no. High sided vehicles, no. Motorcyclists, no. And cars as suggested, yes. What should you do as you approach this lorry? Um, it's on your side of the road. It's coming out. It's on your side of the road. Slow down. Give it time. Um, something along those lines is what we're looking for. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Yes, first one out. Flash your headlights at the lorry, no. Make the lorry wait for you, no. Move to the right hand side of the road, again, no. You're traveling behind a bus. What should you do if it pulls up at a bus stop? So if a bus pulls up at a bus stop, what you wanna do is be careful of pedestrians um, coming off the bus and walking in front of it especially. Look for pedestrians, yes. Pulling closely behind the bus, no, because you won't be able to see. Accelerate past the bus. Again, accelerating pedestrians across in front can be dangerous. And sound your horn, no. 
You're driving in heavy traffic on a wet road. Which light should you use if there's a lot of surface spray? Now, if you watch my previous videos, as I always say in those videos, that's about lights. If it's a bog standard question about lights, it's going to be dipped headlights or headlights. They can use either term, um, it's the same thing, they just drop the dips. So it's dipped headlights or headlights if it's a bog standard light question. If they want more information about lights, the information will be in the question. But if there's no information in the question other than it's wet, there's bog standard, headlights or dipped headlights is what we're looking for. Dipped headlights, first one out. Rare fog lights, if visibility is more than 100 meters, 328 feet, no. Side lights only, no. Main beam headlights, no. You're following a long vehicle as it approaches a crossroads. What should you do if it signals left but moves out to the right? Now, if a lorry signals left but moves out to the right, it hasn't given a wrong signal. It's got to move to the right to get around the corner because it swings out where a car will stay a meter from the left. A lorry has to swing out to get around the corner without mounting the pavement. Stay well back and give it room, yes. Overtake it as it starts to slow down, no. Get close in order to pass it quickly, no. Assume the signal is wrong and it's turning right again, no. It's very windy. What should you do if you're behind a motorcyclist who's overtaking a high-sided vehicle? Right, with this one, you just want to give it space. If it's anything to do with bikes, to be fair, just give it room, give it space. You're not on a rush on your driving lessons or driving test. Keep close to the motorcyclist, no. Stay level with the motorcyclist, no. Keep well back, yes, safest option. Overtake the motorcyclist immediately, again, no. What should you do when you're approaching a bus that's signaling to move away from a bus stop? Get past before it moves, no. Allow it to pull away if it's safe to do so. The key word there is if it's safe to do so, just in case you didn't know, if a bus signals to move from a bus stop and it is safe to let the bus go, then the bus has priority in that situation. So it's gonna be about one. Flash your headlights as you approach, no. Signal left and wave the bus on, no. You're following a long vehicle approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the driver signals right but moves close to the left-hand curve? This is similar to the question we had before. It was signal left, move to the right. It's just slightly worded differently. It's the same thing, hold back, give the lorry time to do what it's got to do. Report the driver to the police, no. Overtake on the right-hand side, no. Warn the driver about the wrong signal, no. Wait behind the long vehicle, and that's gonna be the safest option. What do you do if you overtake a cyclist when it's very windy? So the key word there is what should you do? Allow extra room, yep, you should definitely give cyclists extra room when overtaking generally, but when it's windy, more than um, normal. So it's gonna be allow extra room. Overtake very slowly, no. Keep close as you pass, no. Sound your horn repeatedly, no. You're towing a caravan, which is the safest type of rear view mirror to use. Now in this case, it's gonna be your wing mirrors. They make it sound like it's your normal rear view mirror, but it's your wing mirrors that you need to be using because the caravan is wider than the car, so you need to be able to see down the sides to do your left turns, right turn, lane changes. Rear view mirror, all you're gonna see is caravan. So ordinary interior mirror, no. Ordinary door mirrors, no. Extended arm side mirrors, yes. Interior wide angle mirror, no. What should, what should you be prepared to do in this situation? Again, it's similar to the diagram, but the other one was a lot clearer and, and, and closer, but this is the same image. Um, and again, if you use an app, you can enlarge the image just like I've just done. Um, and it's gonna again, slow down, give it time to do what it needs to do. Slow down and give way, yes. Squeeze through the gap, no. Report the driver to the police, no. Sound your horn and continue, no. What should you do if there's a bus at a bus stop ahead of you? Now, this is a similar question that we had before. And as I say in my videos, if you understand the question, understand the answers, it doesn't make a difference how they spin it. Especially when you go into the rule test because the questions are gonna be worded slightly differently because all the app questions, regardless of what app that you use, they're sampled questions. 
so it will be worded differently. You'll even come across questions that you haven't seen in the apps before. But so this answer is going to be similar to what we had um, before. Be aware of pedestrians, slow down, something along those lines is what we're looking for. So continue at the same speed but sound your horn as a warning, no. Watch carefully for sudden appearance of pedestrians, yes. Flash your lights to warn the driver of your presence, no. Pass the bus as quickly as you possibly can, again, no. You're approaching a mini roundabout, so it's mini roundabout. What should you do for long vehicle in front signals left but positions over to the right? Again, similar question as we've had previously. We've had two previously in different situations. Um, this one now is not a mini roundabout. Again, worded differently, same answer. Keep well back, the first one out. Sound your horn, no. Overtake on the left, no. Follow the same course as a lorry, no. You're about to overtake a slow moving cyclist. Which sign would make you take special care? So um, with this one, the key here is you're overtaking a slow moving motorcyclist. So which sign would make you take special care? So the key word is slow moving cyclist. So you're looking for triangles or warnings. This triangle on here is warning you of um, windy conditions. Obviously, if it's windy, cyclists, that can be blown in front of you. So that's the one we're looking for. You are following a lorry on a wet road. What should you do when spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead? Now, if you can't see the road ahead, use your window wipers, obviously, but that should be standard if it's already raining. So you want to say you want to drop further back so you get less spray on your car, basically. Um, keep close to the lorry away from spray. No. Speed up and overtake quickly. No. Put your headlights on full beam. No. And drop back until you can see better. Yes. What should you do if you want to overtake a long, slow moving vehicle on a busy road? So the key word there is what should you do? Flash your headlights for oncoming traffic to give way, no. Stay behind until the driver waves you past, no. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead, no. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead, yes. So you keep well back. As I said before at the start of this, um, when you're driving behind something big, you want to hold back so you can see the wing mirrors so they can see you, but most importantly that you can see the road ahead. So it's going to be the bottom one. You're following a large vehicle as it approaches a crossroads. What should you do for driver signals to turn left? Again, slightly, it's really slightly different. It's not given a different signal moving out, but it's given a signal what should you do. And again, with anything large, to be honest, when you can't see the road clearly, it's going to hold back. That's going to always be the safest option. So overtake if you can leave plenty of room. No. Wait for the driver to cancel their signal. No. Overtake if there's no oncoming vehicles. No. Wait for the vehicle to finish turning. Yes, that's the safest option. So there you have it, other type of vehicles, one of the easiest categories, it only has 22 questions. And you can see we had about three or four lorry questions. Um, so it's, this category is one of the easier ones. All you've got to do is remember the safety factor. That's all you're trying to get with this, or with the whole thing, which is not just this category, is the safety factor. So hopefully you got some value from that. If you haven't already, come and join us in our community on Discord where you can study with like-minded students, ask any questions, get any answers to any concerns and doubts that you may have to give yourself a best possible chance of passing that theory test. If you got value from this video, like, definitely comment below, subscribe, share it with your friends so they have a chance of passing that theory test first time just like you. YouTube's gonna show you a video here, I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you and I shall catch you in the next video.